Okay, 5.8 solutions. I'm gonna apologize in advance. This one's gonna be a little uh, longer than normal, but such is life, and uh, we just gotta deal with it. All right. So solutions are types of mixtures, and as such, they're gonna have the properties of mixtures. Okay. They can be separated by physical means, as opposed to chemical. Okay. So they're not chemically combined. Review. Heterogeneous, different throughout. Homogeneous is the same throughout, or uniform composition. A solution is a type of homogeneous mixture. Right? Solutions are not heterogeneous. And definition, an alloy is a solid solution, usually mixed metal. So here's an alloy of carbon and zinc. Okay. And here's an alloy of carbon and iron. I'm sorry, an alloy of copper and zinc and carbon and iron. So this is an alloy called brass. This is an alloy carbon steel. All right, so solutions. Solutions are going to be made up of two parts. The solute, the substance or substances that are dissolved in or into a solution. For example, the salt in salt water. The solvent is the substance that is dissolving the solute. For example, the water in salt water. Okay, so when we talk salt water, the salt is the solute. The water is the solvent and the solution is the salt water. Term we've used a whole bunch of times but we have to really make sure we remember it now. Aqueous is a solution in which water is the solvent and we can see it's this AQ. Generally, if you're having to pick between the solute and the solvent, generally, not always, but generally, the solvent will be a liquid. The solute will be a solid. Okay? Solute can be, you know, they can both be liquids, but generally what we're going to be doing is solid solute, liquid solvent. Okay, so there's different types of solutions. And by types of solution, I mean the terms we're going to use to describe them. And very common, unsaturated. It's a solution in which more solute could be dissolved in a given volume of solvent. Okay? Saturated is a solution containing the maximum amount of solute that will dissolve in a given volume of solvent. Okay, so saturated, the solution is said to be yet at equilibrium. And I'll draw a little bit more about that in just a moment. The other one is supersaturated, a solution that contains more solute than would normally dissolve in a given volume of solvent. All right, so what does that mean? Let's say you take a uh, cup of hot tea and you add a little bit. All right, here's our tea. Lovely. Oh, that's going to spill, so we'll pretend the cup's a little bigger. Oh, better. All right, and we add in a little bit of sugar. Stir it up, the sugar dissolves. Okay? At this point in time, we would call this solution unsaturated, because chances are we can add more sugar. And when we add more sugar, that dissolves also. Eventually, it gets to the point where no more sugar seems to dissolve, where the sugar starts to clump up on the bottom of our cup of tea. Okay? At that point, we would describe this as saturated. Now remember before when I talked about equilibrium, okay? And equal, I know it's spelled a little different, but we'll pretend equal is the key word here. And what that means is, while we have this clump of sugar sitting at the bottom of our cup of tea, at any given moment, some of the sugar that's dissolved is actually settling out, precipitating out. And at the same time, some of the sugar that's clumped on the bottom dissolves. When the rate at which it's settling out equals the rate at which it's dissolving, okay, that's described as equilibrium. And a saturated solution is at equilibrium. 
Now, supersaturated means, let's say we take uh, water and we put it on the, in a pot in the stove, okay, and we start heating it up, all right, and we add sugar, stir, add sugar, stir, add sugar, stir, bring it to just about boiling, and keep on adding sugar until no more dissolves, right, so we get as much sugar as we can pack into this water at boiling, and then we let it cool. If we manage to let it cool undisturbed, that sugar will stay in solution. So when it, let's say when it cools down to 50 degrees Celsius, the amount of sugar that was dissolved at 100 degrees Celsius is still in solution. Okay, there's more sugar dissolved than that has business being dissolved. That's super saturated. Okay, so if we take here 30 grams salt, dissolve it in water, okay? Now we're going to have an unsaturated solution, right? We can see all the salt is dissolved. We don't see any of it. Add 40 grams of salt into 100 milliliters of water, right? We have a saturated solution, but extra salt sitting at the bottom, and that extra salt is the portion that just didn't dissolve. Okay, now... How do you know how much stuff is going to dissolve? Well, we have table G, which are solubility curves. You don't have to write all of this down. But table G shows the number of grams of a substance that can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at temperatures between, well, it should be between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius. Each curve represents the maximum amount of substance that can be dissolved at a given temperature. All lines that show an increase in solubility as temperature increases represent solids. Because solids, you can dissolve more solid as temperature increases. They slope upwards. The lines representing gases slope downward. And that's because as something gets warmer, all right, as the water gets warmer, less gas will dissolve. All right, so here's the important things to write down here. This part here important to write down, and the amount, the number of grams in 100 grams of water. Okay, these are the important parts to make sure you have down. All right, so let's look here. If the intersection of grams of solute versus temperature falls on the curve the solution is saturated under the curve it is unsaturated above the curve it is super saturated remember on the curve it is simply saturated so let's think of an example here how many grams of salt will dissolve in 100 grams of water at 90 degrees Celsius. Well, this is all 100 grams of water, so that part's easy. 90 degrees Celsius, how many grams NaCl will dissolve? So we got to find where's NaCl. All right, so here's the line for NaCl. So this is the line we're going to use. So for right now, we're going to ignore the rest. We're going to find 90 degrees Celsius, trace it up to the line, and now we trace it over and see at 90 degrees Celsius, 40 grams NaCl will dissolve in 100 grams of water. All right, next question. Is a solution that is made up of 100 grams of water and 70 grams KNO3 at 50 degrees Celsius saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated? So now let's look and see. 70 grams of KNO3 at 50 degrees Celsius. So we find 50 degrees Celsius, go up to 70, and make our mark here. Okay, so here's our mark. Now it's KNO3. Where's the line for KNO3? Up oh, here's the line for KNO3. So we have to say, is this point above, on, or below the line? If it was above the line, it would be supersaturated. If it's on the line, it would be saturated. If it's below the line, it's unsaturated. Well, we can see, obviously, that it's below the line. That makes it unsaturated. Don't worry, we will practice more of these in class.
Question time. Name two substances on table G that are solids and two that are gases. Can't do this. Gotta go back and re-listen because I told you how to figure it out. Brings to the end. I'll see you guys in school.